Maria Ann Sherwood was born into a farming family in England in 1799. Because of her parents' work, she became interested in agriculture and began working on the farm as well. When she was just 19 years old, she married a man named Thomas Smith, who was a farm laborer, and the pair managed a farm in Beckley for the next 19 years, beginning a family of their own. In 1838, government officials were recruiting people from agricultural backgrounds who possessed the skills desperately needed for farms in Australia. Along with several other families from the area, the Smiths boarded the Lady Nugent and arrived in Sydney on November 27, 1838. Upon their arrival, Thomas was given a job by Mr. Smart of Kissing Point, later to become Ride, and earned five pounds a year as a farm labourer. Like most people in the area, the Smiths honed their skills as orchardists. Fruit abounded in the district. Between 1855 and 1856, the Smiths bought their own lot of land and began their own orchard. Maria Ann Smith enjoyed raising her own seedling apples, just as many of her neighbours specialised in other varieties of fruits. This all brings us around to the Granny Smith apple. Now, there are several different accounts of her discovery of her namesake apple, but the generally accepted one comes from an article in Farmer and Settler from 1924. Herbert Rumsey, who published the article, was also an orchardist in the area and interviewed two other farmers who knew Granny Smith. They claimed that in 1868, Maria Ann Smith, then 69 years old, found the seedling growing by a creek on her property. She believed that the seedling had grown from French crab apples. Granny Smith began the cultivation of this new apple tree, and yet another local, Edward Gallard, developed a large crop of them from cuttings from the first tree and continued to do so annually until his death in 1914. The apples became widely popular in Australia and New Zealand. Displayed at the Castle Hill Agricultural and Horticultural Show in 1891, Smith's Seedling won the prize for best cooking apple. In 1895, Granny Smith apples were being produced at the Government Experimental Station in Bathurst, New South Wales, on a large scale. Soon after, they were included on the list of fruit suitable for export put out by the Department of Agriculture. The apples were first introduced to Great Britain in 1935 and was a relatively recent popular addition to the United States when it was introduced in 1972 by Grady Orville of the Orville Fruit Company. As for Granny Smith, she never saw her apples gain commercial recognition, dying in 1870, two years after discovering the apple seedling on her property. And now for some bonus facts. Granny Smith apple trees, like most apple trees, cannot pollinate themselves and must be grown in close proximity to a different apple tree in order to produce fruit. Because of this, if you were to take the seeds from a Granny Smith apple that you bought at a grocery store and plant them, the tree that would result would, in most cases, not bear Granny Smith apples, but rather a different type of apple with these hybrids more often than not being unpalatable. Similarly, most apple trees do not reproduce true to type. To maintain the different types of apple, cuttings from the trees are grafted onto rootstocks rather than growing them from seeds. This vegetative propagation is the most practical way to ensure that the apples that result are genetically identical to the parent tree. And now for another bonus fact, apple trees have been around for over 50 million years, but it wasn't until three to 4,000 years ago that people domesticated the tree and began cultivating apples. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you're looking for something else to watch right now, why not check out another video that we've done? Who was the Tom in Peeping Tom? You can find that linked to on the screen now as well as below this video. And also don't forget to subscribe, brand new videos every day of the week. And as always, thank you for watching.